Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 12.30 p.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called A VR Tool to Improve Your Public Speaking Skills. Our speaker is Miriam El Yamri. She is currently completing her PhD at Cumplutense uh, University in Madrid. Her main research area is the use of VR to train the ability of public speaking and exploring how to make computers understand human communication. She is also the co-founder of Crotec, a software and hardware development studio based in Madrid. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of the sessions, and the full schedule of events. This session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound 0CSCC19. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the session. Over to you, Miriam. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Miriam, and I'm here uh, to tell you about a tool that we've been working on in Complutense University. And it's a tool, uh, a VR tool that we try to uh, use it to improve public speaking skills. Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself a little bit more. Um, I'm actually doing my PhD in uh, Complutense University in Madrid, and my main research focus is uh, about how can we make machines understand human communication, like right? how can we make them uh, know if uh, a human communication is effective or not. Uh, and this project is part of, of, of my research. I'm also the, the co-founder of, of Crotec, as Lear said, and um, in Crotec we uh, basically do all kinds of uh, technology projects and uh, some of them are related to virtual reality and augmented reality as well. So one thing I, I always like to, to ask when, when I'm talking about this, this work is uh, who in this room or who in this auditorium is not afraid of, of public speaking, not afraid at all. And uh, I'd say raise your hand, uh, but as we are in, in this virtual environment, I'm guessing that not a lot of you will, will raise their hands. And uh, this is because um, public speaking is something that is very common that we, we do uh, in our uh, daily life, in, in daily situations. But um, we all experiment some kind of nerves and some, uh, some we are afraid sometimes when we go uh, in front of an audience. Uh, however, oratory or uh, the art of public speaking with eloquence has been cultivated since ancient times. I mean, the Greeks were pioneers in, in this uh, and uh, there, was, uh, there were other characters throughout history that, uh, that used this discipline to even change the course of history. I'm sure you can think of some great ones. But nowadays, the, the internet has multiplied the importance of, of these disciplines because today audiences can be counted in millions. And however, this fear, uh, which is a disproportionate reaction to, to, the, to the threatening situation of, of facing an audience, affects a very important part of the population. Actually, um, there are uh, there is a statistic that says that 57% of young people between 12 and 17 years old consider the fear of public speaking the second most feared social situation. And uh, this fear affects a very, very lar large part of the population. So um, this fear um, can sometimes uh, turn into a phobia when it's very extreme. And, and the technical term for this is glossophobia. However, uh, this does not affect a lot of people, but uh, the, the, just the nerves or the fear is there. And uh, there's another statistic that says that it affects 75% of the population. Uh, so when we think about communicating or when we communicate, not only public speaking, but any type of communication, there are like two types of, uh, of things that happen or uh, types of communication or underlying communication. We have verbal, uh, which is the one where we use linguistic signs to transmit a message, such as uh, sentences or words or things like that. And then we have a whole part, which is the nonverbal, the part that also happens when we communicate, and it's also very important. 
um, the process of sending communication with signs and cues and things that are not words is this uh, nonverbal part. And actually, there are animals that show certain types of, of nonverbal communication. Um, so, in this nonverbal, we can also distinguish between two uh, types. There is the paralanguage, which is everything that goes with the voice, like how the voice changes, how the volume changes, and everything that has to do with voice. And then, the, and then there is this other uh, uh, part that it's the body language, our gestures, our posture, and uh, everything related to, to how we move our body when we speak or when we communicate. And when we speak, um, we feel some emotions, and some of those emotions are, are transmitted and uh, coupled with, with, with what we say. So verbal communication um, has this uh, also this uh, emotion affect affect our our way of talking or our way of speaking. So in the in the nonverbal part. When we speak, our voice or the emotions that we are feeling affect our respiratory system, and then they produce our voice, our voice tone to be modified. Obviously, not all the emotions that the, that the speaker feels uh, are transmitted or reflected in the voice. But for the purposes of the work that we that we are trying to do, uh, what interests us is those emotions that the audience can see and, in consequence, react to. And also, when we speak, the emotions uh, that we are feeling in that moment um, make us uh, use some words or some sentences differently depending on, on those emotions. So they also affect our verbal communication. So bearing that in mind, we looked at some previous work that was uh, that was already there from people that were attacking also this, uh, how can we improve public speaking skills with virtual reality? And uh, a lot of uh, the, the tools that are already there uh, are limited to offering just a safe space where to practice and the feedback is very limited. Um, and this is because saying if the speech is uh, right or wrong, it's a very, very complex task. It is something that is very subtle and it's a human thing. Uh, we do it instinctively and very easy, but for a machine to understand and say if a speech is uh, an effective speech or not, um, it's not so it's not so easy. And that's why we decided to focus on on just the emotions. <laughs> so our objective for this work is to create, a, a virtual environment where uh, where the speaker can improve public speaking skills, and it is in the form of a video game. And in this video game, the speaker in, uh, is in front of an audience, and uh, there is a virtual audience that will react and bring real time feedback to the speaker, so that the speaker can can see how effective uh, the speech is. So in any technological tool that pretends to teach oral communication skills, the feedback of the listener must be crucial for the speaker to know if the message is being effective or not. Because we can understand um, oral communication as a continuous phenomenon of adaptation of the speaker to the feedback received by the listener. Um, <clears throat> so... In this project, uh, on our first prototype, we decided to focus on three main things. Uh, we built an emotions extractor, which is based on the voice and the content of the speech. So we extract emotions from how the voice changes and how the speech uh, content is. We also have a gaze tracker, which uh, checks where is the speaker looking at, because it's important to know if the speaker is looking all the time at the screen or mostly at the audience. And we have this reactive virtual audience that brings real-time feedback to the speaker so it can see if, if the speech is good or not. Uh, this is the architecture of our system. And we have uh, two main, main parts. So the project has been designed in such a way that it's divided in two decoupled environments that work together. We have the virtual environment where the speaker's action takes place and where the speaker features are collected. And we have the analysis environment where these features are processed to generate reactions in the virtual audience and then draw conclusions about if uh, the speech is effective or not. 
In our system, the speaker's features can be analyzed and these features can be internal or external. So we have internal features that refer to the parameters of the speaker that the audience does not see. So they are more like related to biometrical parameters like sweat or heart rate, for example. And these features do not have to affect the reaction of the audience since the audience is not aware of them. But they are interesting to know if uh, how is the internal state of the speaker and see if this internal state affects the speech. But for, for uh, this first prototype, we focused on the external ones, which are external to the speaker. Uh, they, those are the features that are uh, clearly visible uh, for the audience and therefore will have an impact on the degree of, of the attention. And we can distinguish between different types of features according to the parameter that is being analyzed at each moment. Uh, for this, we, we've used uh, voice, content and gaze. So, um, if you look at the if you look at the figure, uh, you can see that in the virtual environment, we just uh, put the player to 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 uh, practice the speech, and then uh, we collect the voice and collect the gaze. The voice is sent to the analysis environment where we do two things with it. We first uh, extract the speech, the content to text, and then uh, we send. Uh, both the text and the audio to to the emotions extractor and this emotions extractor will generate uh, or will uh, decide which is the predominant emotion in the speech and then we create a reaction for the virtual audience and we send it back to the virtual environment and in the virtual environment um, the, the 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 audience uh, the reactive audience which is virtual will react uh, with that with that reaction and will also take into account the gaze so here's a picture of how uh, this looks like and as you can see this is uh, from the point of view of, of the speaker and there's this auditorium and the audience and some stats on on the top as you can see the audience is spherical so why is this well, um, the spherical shape of the, of the audience has been uh, designed in this way uh, for two main reasons, mainly because 3D modeling is a, an expensive process, as you know, and we wanted to create a prototype uh, as fast as possible to test it. And also because uh, there is some literature that says that the appearance of the characters in a virtual world does not need to be realistic as long as their behavior is consistent. So what is important is that the behavior is consistent. And in this case, the behavior is very simple. The spheres turn from red to green, depending on how effective is the speech. So uh, imagine that you are talking and then at a simple glance, you can see if your speech is good or not, because uh, if, if, if it's not uh, like the spheres will just turn red, all of them. Um, <clears throat> So after creating the prototype, we did a little experiment with, with the voice because we wanted to test if this, if this made sense or not. So um, we wanted to test how do the emotions in voice affect the effectiveness of the speech. And for that, we gathered a real audience of people and we gathered some actors that performed uh, in front of this real audience a speech. And uh, the speeches that the actors performed were speeches with uh, certain emotions, uh, sadness or anger or happiness, etc. So we made the audience write down uh, the emotion that they detected and also how effective they, they thought the speech was. And we gathered some uh, all these results. After that, we passed the audio of, of the actors to our system and then we compared results. And the results were very interesting because uh, we had some weights for the emotion at the beginning. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, five kind of, uh, of emotions and we have some weight based on common sense, basically on how, how they could affect the speech. But after we, we did the experiment, it was interesting because uh, one, one interesting thing is that uh, we saw that the stress emotion or the anger emotion, which one could think that it's something bad for a speech, uh, the audience reacted very well to it when it was uh, in a very short time. It means that uh, when the speaker was doing a boring or, or let's say a happy speech and then it turned back to, to stress emotion, 
for the audience, it was engaging. It was good. So we had to refine our algorithm and, and try to, to make it better to, to uh, take into account all these things, like how long was the emotion projected and also uh, how good was it? Uh, how, how is this weight affecting the, the emotion? And this experiment helped us a lot to, to do so. So um, to, to wrap up a little bit, uh, as I said, uh, oral communication is inherent to, to human beings and allows us to transmit emotions and desires and facts and ideas. And there is two types of underlying communication that we need to, to take into account, uh, nonverbal and verbal. But uh, when we communicate, we also need to, to see how the listener is, is, uh, is giving us feedback and take it, that into account in order to, to, to improve our speech or to make it more effective, to communicate better. And that's why we created this tool, the first prototype, and we are still working on it. Uh, our current work is uh, doing more things, adding uh, more features to the to the to the system and uh, improving our feedback algorithm because now we have three features, but we would like to add some biometrical parameters to try to see if uh, they are effective or not, if they or if they influence, uh, however, the, the speech. And also, uh, we want to make a more realistic audience. I know that the Spheres audience is uh, it actually, it works for us uh, very good, but we need to make a more realistic scenario for people to really practice in a safe space that feels realistic. And uh, we want to also include a, an automatic question generator that is based on the speech of the speaker so that the audience can make it even more realistic by asking questions about the speech. So that would be all. I hope you enjoyed the, the, the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, I don't know if we have much time, but it, you can find me, this is my info, or you can find me in my, in my booth in the, um, in the Expo Region 3. And that would be all. Thank you, Miriam, for that fantastic session. Are there any questions for Miriam? There were some comments in the chat, la chat log, and of course, over the terminology and how it can be paralyzing to, to, for public speaking. And Mariana says, thank you. It's much appreciated. Thank you. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, the next session will begin at 1 p.m. in this keynote region, and it is entitled the Open Source High Fidelity Panel. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Miriam has a booth over there also, so we recommend that you go over and check out her content. Thank you again to, our, to Miriam and to the audience. <laughs>